Hello, this is Haku Debian, and I'm here to bring to you SCP 61, 62, 63, 64, and 65. Please enjoy this video. If you enjoyed the video, please uh, like, like it down below and subscribe I, I, I to the channel. Just give me a minute here. Alright, here we are. Auditory Mind Control. Item Number. SCP-61. Object Class. Safe. Special Containment Procedures. The source code for SCP-61 is to be kept in a standard archival quality read-only data a compact get disk. Or a CD-ROM. Four copies of the CD-ROM with the same source code are to be stored in separate maximum security inanimate object lockers, except for purposes of approved experimentation. SCP-61 is not to be loaded, compiled, or run. Research proposals for SCP-61 require a written approval from site command. Only one copy of the CD-ROM which contains the source code for SCP-61 may be used at a time. CD-ROM is to be returned to storage immediately after having been used to load the source code for SCP-61 to a device. SCP-61 must never be loaded, compiled, or run on any device which has a connection to the internet, either directly or via another device. SCP-61 must never be loaded, compiled, or run on any device which is physically, which, which is physically capable of wireless connectivity, regardless of whether that connectivity is in use. For purposes of approved experimentation, SCP-61 a61 may be loaded, compiled, or run on a LAN consisting of no more than three new devices plus peripherals. No device is allowed to be disconnected from the LAN during experimentation. Following the conclusion of experimentation, all devices within this LAN are to be immediately reformatted. Audio output and peripherals for this LAN are to be contained within an observation chamber surrounded with no noise cast and sling vacuum insulation. In the event of a perimeter breach reached by hostiles during SCP-61 experimentation, all devices within the land are to be immediately destroyed. Description: SCP-61 is an acoustic pro computer program being developed by SCP researchers with the intent of producing successful countermeasures to similar programs being developed by governments and individuals around the world. Inspired by research on data expunge, SCP Command saw both the potential harm and, and, and the ability to control the brain functions of other human beings. Laymen understand that music can elicit certain emotions and memories of various, sa or various sounds can elicit fear and excitement by simply being heard. The governments around the world have been attempting to expand on the MS for decades. The SCP research is the first to elicit its responses on higher mental activities. Parts of the brain affected by SCP-61 differ from those stimulated by data expunge or by subliminal messaging. Instead of acting on parts of the brain that are thought to be in control of the subconscious, acoustic frequencies produced by SCP-61 later steps of conscious thoughts as, as they are produced and replace them. That's of a suggestion, the human hearing in, in center bisects the conscious thinking mind of the frontal lobe with the motor control of cordless homunculus of the brain. The baseline rhythm convinces the rest of the brain that the conscious mind is asleep and effectively stops conscious thought from continuing into the rest of the brain. In return, the frontal lobe experiences a pause or Resembles the psychological effects of anesthesia. 
acoustic codes developed by SP61R interpreted by motor sensors in the brain as conscious instructions and subjects and the subject typically acts accordingly. See Addendum 1. Subjects will normally have a blank facial expression while under the influence of SCP-61. They are not responsive to attempts at conversation and express no desires, such as hunger or interest in sexual advances. Weird, I did that without mind control. I mean, have no desires and whatever. Though all com ends are followed without question, the effects of the auditory control cease once the subject is no longer able to hear the program. Most, subje most test subjects report being unable to remember the actions they performed while under control, but a few have experienced the effect of watching helplessly as their body gets acted against their will. The intent of such research is to discover ways to counteract the effects of auditory mind control. However, only two methods of cameras just have proven successful as of yet. 1. The subject's hearing is impaired so that the individual can no longer hear the, the program, either by covering the ear or deafening the subject. 2. The program itself sends a code instruction to the hearing center of the brain, permanently shutting it down. Though the ear continues to hear, there has been no progress in finding the proper code to reboot the hearing center of the, hear hearing center of the brain. Despite its, short its, short its shortcomings, SCP-61 represents a promise in developing in the, the creation of counter-anomalous phenomenon. Further research is ongoing. Addendum 1. All subjects are placed under auditory control, issued a code auditory command, and then monitored. Subject 4402F. Command, sleep. Response. Subject curled up into the field position on the floor and began emitting alpha, alpha waves associated with sleep. Her eyes remained and open in the typical blank, empty expression associated with controlled subjects, but her eyes switch rapidly in ways associated with REM sleep. Subject 4427M. Command run on and tread and mill. Subject mounts the treadmill and then proceeds to run. Subject did not turn on the, the treadmill, resulting in the subject impel impacting the control platform. Subject repeated this until the stop command was issued. No. More detailed commands are advised for task oriented commands. Subject. Forty four twenty seven. Command Turn treadmill on. Run on treadmill. Response Subject turned on treadmill to maximum speed. Mounted and attempted to run before being ejected off the conveyor belt. Subject repeated attempts to turn on the treadmill to ground speed and run and on it with various outcomes. No, more detailed commands are advice for task oriented classes. Subject 44 or 27M. Command Turn on treadmill to jogging speed. Run on treadmill. Response Subject successfully dragged on treadmill until a soft command was issued, which resulted in the subject being ejected off the conveyor belt. Note: Subjects should be in a safe, neutral position before soft commands are issued. Now we go on to SCP-62, also known as the Quantum Computer. I have a number, SCP-62, Object Class Euclid, Special Containing Procedures. SCP-62 is stored in a dedicated containment cell at site blank under clean room conditions. Any sort of limitation on, on SCP-62 must receive prior permission from at least two... <clears throat> from at least two level three personnel, and must only be performed with independent power sources. SCP-62 must never be attached to an external network, and all LDA extracted from SCP-62 
This is stored on the external non-volatile media until analyzed. Description SCP-62 appears to be an unbranded personal, personal OLAP desktop computer housed in an aluminum case of indeterminate manufacture. SCP-62 is usually heavy at approximately no, it's unusually heavy at approximately 24 kilograms and lacks manufacturing of branding labels of any kind. The words information is freedom, sick, or sounds crash into the casing near the back, apparently with a key or similar object. Inspection of its interior it has revealed that SCP-62 is empty except for a blank circuit board in place of where the motherboard of a standard personal computer would be. SCP-62 will not function unless the case is com completely sealed. Attempts to open the case while it is operating cause it to shut down immediately. Despite this, SV62 operates as expected for a normal desktop computer, with the exception that its performance operating system contained data and language appears to be different upon every activation. SCP-62 was discovered in the basement of the University of Blank Computer Science Laboratory by a redacted and embedded Relation agent sees the object and brought it to the site blank, where it has been since been contained. Addendum 62-1 no List of Noble Activation Results The dates are all unknown, I'm guessing. Description SCP So test so activation one. SCP a62 appears to be running Windows XP and Catalan. An analysis of contained data showed financial records for the redacted banking firm in France for the period of May 1963 to April 1987. These records are inconsistent with actual bank records uh, procured by undercover foundation agents. Activation 2. SCP-62 appeared to be running Debian Linux in Latin. Contained it, it consisted of a library of audios of over or at least a thousand oral songs and and hymns, of which blank are not found in any known collection or have, have never been performed. Activation 3. SV62 appeared to be running a version of Alaris in Portuguese. Contained data uh, as it consists of promotion and marketing material for Redacted, which appears to be a commercial space flight corporation that does not exist. Activation 4. SCP-62 appeared to be running an unknown operation operating system visually similar to OS2, which is an unknown language. They are identified to have strong similarities to that of the Vornik manuscript. Attempts at deciphering in the contained date it are ongoing. Activation 5. SV62 appears to be running redacted in French. Contained data confirmed to be that of a standard foundation workstation. The site at indicated by its location data, site blank, does not exist. The investigation is ongoing. Activating Activation 6. SV62 appears to be running Apple OS X in what appears to be Akkadian and cuneiform script. Contained data appears to be composed mainly of religious texts and descriptions of ritual and ceremonial procedures. Activation 7. Redacted. An investigation is ongoing as to how the virus managed to compromise three workstations in one. And in one file server before SV62 was forcibly shut down. All affected workstations have been isolated. Now we move on to SCP-63, the world's best hot brush. And yes, that is, uh, I pronounced that correctly. I remember, SCP-63, object class safe.
Special criterion procedures. SCP-63 is to be kept at all times with Dr. Blank's personal bathroom. Located within the personnel quarters upon site 19. Objects we use that as designed at least once in a 24 hour period or the object will begin to emit an unknown specialized radiation that results in objects and material within a 0.6 meter or 2 foot radius, being slowly warped and eventually disintegrating into a fine dust. Radiation's effect on living test subjects has not been monitored. Description SV-63 appears to be an average pale to blue toothbrush. Since along the side of the object are words, the word it's best as toth brush. The word toothbrush is spelled incorrectly, though whether this is, is was accidental or a purposeful action by a creator of the object is unknown. SV-63 displays the ability to effortlessly, effortlessly cleat through any and all dead or inorganic matter, the focal point of this ability being the bristles. However, barrier touched by the, the toothbrush is not separated such as, as by way of a knife, but completely expunged upon it from existence, leaving no trace whatsoever. This mode of operation is reminiscent uh, of SCP-2207, possessing these two anomalies share a connection or were created by the same entity or entities. Additionally, subjects who have used SV-63 have claimed that the experience left their teeth feeling remarkably clean. In spite of, it, of its extra, extraordinary abilities, lab analysis has discerned that SV-63 is completely made of common plastic. Addendum. SV-63 was originally found in Petersburg, in St. Petersburg, on the first end of blank. A thief working in the area using SV-63 his ability to correct saves. When questioned about the object, subject professed ignorance and claimed they simply found the object one day. Questioning the subject continued until he took, took his own life. His reason for doing this is as of yet unknown. Now, SCP-64. Flawed von Neumann structure. Item number SCP-64, object class safe. SCP-64 is to be kept in a suitably remote area for observation. Current goals are to generate a geometric model for the of the of the object's behavioral patterns and to observe any changes in this pattern due to location and soil composition. Certain sites in the Gobi Desert, Australian Outback, as well as a number of salt flats scattered across the globe, are under consideration for future testing. SCP-64 is current location is classified to all personnel under Security Clearance 3. Once growth has stopped, field teams are to document the structure's size, shape, and composition, and remove the object for transport to a new site. Description SCP-64 is a light brown earthenware brick composed primarily of silk on oxides and some organic matter. The object weighs uh, is 1.6 kilograms and measures some 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters by 6 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Its surface is smooth and flat with some minor cosmetic chips by and large. The object is visually it's similar to most solid bricks used in construction. When left lying on a flat expanse of soft earth, SCP-64 will begin to multiply through an unknown mechanism. Close observation reveals the appearance of an irregular lattice of silicon fibers in the shape of the original object, which then fills and solidifies with the soil-based mixture until it attains the proper mass. This process may be similar to Omicillial propagation in fungi with microscopic root structures mining minerals from soil, from soil in the immediate vicinity. Under optimal 
conditions, so uh, um, position at roughly 90% and silicon dioxide, and it takes approximately 70 minutes in a sort of one brick to appear. Given a large frame of ex a large expanse of work uh, to work with, SCP-64 produces a highly complex but theoretically stable freestanding brick structure, including floors and ceilings. Past observations indicate that the structure could speculative could attain the shape of a 12-point star over 10 kilometers in diameter and of considerable height. However, this is speculative as growth stops permanently once the, the structure contacts a significant obstacle. Observed to include any solid object over 10 kilometers uh, over 10 kilograms in mass. Structural integrity is very high as bricks orient themselves to include any salt to be as level as possible and fit together almost perfectly. Interestingly, these subjects grow as tied to a specific set of cardinal directions. With SCP-64 always being the northernmost brick on the lowest level, SCP-64 must be attached for the growth to occur. Once SCP-64 is removed, the structure begins to decay and all secondary bricks crumble to dusk at a, a rate roughly equal to their rate of appearance. Replacing the objects within 20 minutes halts its decay and allows growth to continue. You pass the threshold. The process is irreversible. SCP-64 was found by chance in April of 20-something. During satellite observation of an elated at Plateau in the Andes Mountain. A camera operator noted that one structure was apparently growing, extrapolating the object's approximate location for the object's apparent direction of growth, which stopped during recovery. <sighs> Field teams located the object by difference in color by differences in color between SCP-64 and its secondary bricks, which were high in iron oxide from the local soil. A full excavation of the original site is underway in order to ascertain the object's cultural and technological origins. Now we go to SCP-65, Destroyed Organic Catalyst. Item number, SCP-65, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. As SCP-65 cannot be moved, it has been contained on site, and site blank has been established around it. Site blank has been marked as a government and research facility off limits to civilians. Unauthorized individuals attempting to gain access to the area are to be detained, questioned, and administered a Class A amnestics if, if deemed necessary by site security. An area 17 meters in radius around the center of SCP-65 has to designate the Red Cell. Personnel may not enter the Red Cell on of SCP-65 at any time. An experimentation with SCP-65 may only be performed with prior approval from at least two level 3 senior research staff. Personnel at a high risk of cancer must not be assigned to site blank, and all site blank personnel must undergo mandatory monthly physical evaluations, including cancer screenings. Description SCP-65 is a specific Ericle region of space approximately 12 meters in radius located on a farm near Redacted. SCP-65 was formed by the destruction of an anomalous artifact on site by the Global Occult Coalition on a date. Not sure what date, but a date. Immediately following this its initial event, the rays of SCP-65 was expected, was estimated to have initially expanded to 100 108 meters in radius, resulting in the deaths of 11 
and GLC operatives and five civilians. Since containment by foundation, the effective radius of SCP-65 has shrunk and remained at its current size. <sighs> SCP-65 causes abnormal transfiguration of any living organisms within its area of effect. These effects include, but are not limited to, regression of specialized cells to an undifferentiated stem state, spontaneous separation of fusion of undifferentiated cells, spontaneous necrosis of living tissue and reanimation of dead tissue, rapid genetic mutation of living tissue. These effects occur at a rate proportional to the mass and complexity of the organism. Plants and insects show few of any effects. Small animals will exhibit alterations following several days of exposure. Larger animals will show harmful mutations within animals. And all humans exposed to the red zone have been and fatally altered within approximately 15 minutes of exposure. To date, all attempts at directly observing the center of SCP-65 have failed as SCP-65 causes a form of extreme sensory confusion and all observers that extends to recording equipment. Effective personnel have reported highly distorted vision and hearing that persists for, for several hours and can result in severe dizziness and nausea. Addendum 65-1 Research Notes On blank, a robotic Rover designed to use omatosensory rather than virtual or acoustic navigation match reached the center of SCP-65 and retrieved several objects. When placed back together, these objects appeared to be these air fragments of a stone figurine and of Cocopelli, a Native American fertility deity. Along with free incident data obtained from the uh, Global Old Coalition, it appears that this object had been used by a, by a civilian family to boost the yield of the farm and only came to the attention of the GLC when an investigation by the United States Department of Agriculture revealed genetic markers in their supposed organic crops consistent with those of genetically modified organisms and crops. The GLC attempted an on site destruction of this artifact, resulting in the creation of SV 65. Following this incident, the GOC contacted a foundation in Eisen and requested assistance in containing the resultant anomaly. Maybe the GLC should chill out with trying to destroy anomalies and think things through when they do so. The following document was recovered from the formerly civilian owned farmhouse at Site Blank. John, I heard things aren't going so well back at home. I wish I could come back and help right now, but it's tough over here right now uh, as well. And we're on the verge of some important discoveries. I know it's not much, but I found this during the trip. The man who gave it to me described it as a representation of that which is and that which might be. Plan by the cornfield, and hopefully it'll make, it will help make ends meet. See you soon, Un G. And that was SCP-61, 62, 63, 64, and 65. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you do subscribe to the channel, please ring that little bell all icon. I'll see you next time for some more SCP readings, because I am not going to read any more of that cringy story from yesterday without a good reason.